it's Monday morning and I think the flag is kind of reflecting the mood of the nation today. It's the Queen's funeral today. Uh, if you ever had a sombre flag, that is it. It's, yeah, not particularly flying high either. verge of a field that we're going to drill in a bit. It's fully loaded that tractor with the hedge cut like the loader and the front flail on. Like a Swiss army knife all folded out. Got my rec sheet here for doing the pre-emergence spray on the wheat. It's, we've just had like, I don't know, not even a full millimetre, maybe even half a millimetre rain. It's not enough for the rain gauge to measure, but it's made the ground wet. So perfect now for putting this pre-emergence spray on. So I'm going to go and put that on but I'm gonna put a little bit of glyphosate in with it because two of the fields haven't been sprayed off yet they were they were OSR someone said why do I not like say an oilseed rape well it's just a stupid stupid name for a plant isn't it so I had to do um, some social media deep dive for a TV program I might have been in and all the things it pulled up was every time I'd mentioned rape in a tweet because we don't call it oilseed rape, we just call it rape for short, don't we? And it's stupid. So I think we should just all try and always try and just call it OSR. Because I mean, the Canadians just call it canola. Far better name. But yeah, that's it. So that was the little explanation. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray that off. But I'm spraying it off at the last possible moment. So hopefully the slugs will carry on grazing on the OSR and not on the wheat that we drilled yesterday. I'm trying to fill the sprayer for the rain. And I've just got soaked again. So I'm just Stood on the shed waiting for the clouds to pass. I've just looked on the radar picture. Because it's gone, we'll keep going. The panic set in. Quick, quick, where's the TV remote? <laughs> there we go, we only missed the Range Rovers. Yeah, I've been watching the funeral at my mum's before I go spraying. And uh, the TV's been on that long, it went into like, it was going to turn itself into sleep mode and the panic set in. But what product placement from Range Rover there? I mean, I know they're probably armoured and everything, but. Um, what an advert to the world, sort of three or four Range Rovers following the Queen's coffin. I thought it looked pretty smart. Flag's flying now. Quick diesel fill up and off I go. Yeah, this was sprayed off, uh, not the Saturday gone, the Saturday before. No, sorry, not the Sunday gone, the Sunday before. And then we drilled it on Friday. And now I'm going to pre-emerge and spray it. Like I say, I was a bit annoyed that the ryegrass got away from me. Um, some of it went to seed, but we'll see if the pre-emergent spray can tackle that. So watch this space, it's folding out now. And it was all yellow. So yeah, the spray is yellow. Just jumped off the sprayer to show you what we're doing. So this is oilseed rape now, but it's an oilseed rape stubble or OSR. And I'll show you. If you look in these lines, this is where the drills drill the wheat and then obviously we've got some volunteers growing so the idea is spraying drilling the wheat drill wheat was drilled yesterday hopefully by the time the oil the osr dies off the wheat will have then come up so the slugs will stay eating the osr and not eat the wheat if we'd have killed it off before we'd have drilled the wheat the slugs would have been hungry and are eating the wheat seeds so the idea is they're the distraction I probably could have left it about three or four days but I was spraying the field over there and I didn't want to come back and do two different tank full got some stuff on this week and a few meters and the like so I thought well it'll take a while for the glyphosate to take effect killing these leaves off so the slugs have still got plenty to, uh, to eat until then but yeah the wheat seed is in this slot here so we'll see what it looks like in a few weeks it saves having to use slug pellets. If we do get a slug problem, we can see any sort of grazing on the wheat. We could always come on and put some in, but for the time being, hopefully that'll do the trick. Finish this field now. Sort of ran out a little bit at the end, so put a bit out of the wash tank into it. So we'll see if it works. If not, next time I'm spraying this particular spray, I'll just quickly come and do a little bit. But nice long straight run. So I've just watched Adam Henson's new video of when he visited in the summer when we were filming Country File. It's really good. You see the combine header in it, and it all looks glory, looking nice and straight as well. So um, I'll put a link below this video so you can have a look at that. And did you look at the link below yesterday's video? It was the Real Country File as well, so check that out. But yeah, definitely check out Adam's video. It's below. It's a bit damp this morning, so we've been doing hedge cutting and verge mowing. 
around the fields. Now we are just putting some seed in, some wheat seed actually for a neighbour. We're going to go and do a little bit of drilling for the next door neighbour. They have a sort of a, a field that they've been direct drilling for the last few years. Well, they have a time, I think it's a Betterson drill, so anyway, we're going to try it with the horse. So how it, how it does. Just quickly calibrate it now, so we know it's working right. I probably showed you this numerous amount of times, but to calibrate it, we hang a bag underneath here that comes with the drill. We open these flaps, which we are now closing because we've just finished. We meter the seed out by flicking this switch here. Let it run for a few seconds and we weigh what it's put in the bag and we put the weight that we've got in the bag after we've weighed it into the computer and the tractor and then that'll do the maths for us then and work out how fast to spin this motor so that we get the right amount of seed to the acre or the hectare. We're going to set the drill up Chester. We're going to set the drill up. Yeah. Oh. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going Chester? Where are we going? You excited? Come on, that's your seat. You happy? I think I can hear the vent coming. There we go. It does look a monster that drill. Clean the field, get the steep bank. Lad. Chester's watching. I'm gonna pull forward now and put the axles out. It'll make it more stable for when it unfolds. You can hear it hissing underneath the rams. So if you look now, it's a lot wider than it was when it came down the road. Chester sat very patiently in the buggy waiting for us while we set the drill up. Seems to be doing a nice job anyway, so we're gonna go and get him his other bag of seed he needs. Checking him in the buggy. The sun's just starting to go down now. I'm gonna put this last bag of seed in him and he should have enough then to finish this field off, hopefully. It's quite an awkward shape. It's a, nearly all headland. Some people do ask what is a headland. Headland is what we call the outside of the field. So we go around that, say, with this drill, for instance, three times. That would be the headland. And then we do the inside of the field. Then. Um, don't know why it's called a headland. Maybe is the headland the edge of the country as well? So this is like the edge of the field, perhaps. Don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you call it. For ages I've been thinking, Andrew's dead lucky that that box has never fell off there. I thought it could just slide off. Anyway, I didn't realise. He's <laughs> it's cable tied it on underneath. Drilled holes in the bottom of it. I just thought he was pushing his luck that it hadn't slid off. Oh look, I'm on a Merlot. It's got no feel in it. Pretty standard for this yard. Just took that seed up and I went across the field and come back down the road so we just had the pallet forks on the front. This machine's on Michelin tyres and it's got boom suspension on it and it does 45k so I know we went looking at the JCB ones that do 50k well this does 45k and to be honest it was like really really smooth on the road. I, I don't normally drive them with just just pallet forks on the front normally I've got a bucket on the front but can't complain really nicely balanced machine so a little bit of credit where it's due there because um no, that's not often to take one down the road particularly far without anything on the front so yeah I like it I need to try and remember to put this on charge so tomorrow we can put it in the shed because it's been left outside since it was tracked to pull in what a month ago but yeah it needs to go undercover I don't quite know where we're going to fit it but it'd be nice to at least move it out the middle of the yard <laughs> Rob's back anyway I didn't see him before because I was spraying and then setting Andrew up but he's been leveling off that field where we were cutting the mustard because there's some quite bad ruts in it from when we'd sprayed the oilseed rape in the winter so he's been knocking them down with that so we've actually worked that ground you probably remember i think it was last year 
we put new discs on this and they were scallop ones and they've they've worn completely already um which i'm a bit disappointed about because the first set of discs that were on it from nib they lasted about 10 years and then uh, these ones have just completely not lasted very long at all which is a bit of a shame mustn't have been as good as steel as the new manufacturers ones i can't remember where i got them from either that's that's the other thing i have to look back for the invoices to see who, who supplied them um, but yeah disappointed with that birthday bumper time quite a few today and what's random is two olivers we don't normally have olivers we've got two today so tom miles oliver warden oliver cornwell william hill eric sanson sanson simon knott and ian parnell happy birthday to everyone on there and anyone else whose birthday is today that isn't on there but look we've got oliver cornwell is one but also william hill is two and then Ian Parnell, I think he's 80. So again, massive spread. 79 difference in age of viewers on the channel, which is amazing. So thanks for watching. Anyway, that is all for today. Uh, normal day tomorrow, back to a Tuesday. The flag's still at half mast. When do we put it full now, mast? I don't know. Is it the end of the week? Is it after the funeral? What do people think? Let me know in the comments. And don't forget, if you made it this far, click like, because it does, makes a massive difference to YouTube as well. Right, I'll see you tomorrow.